So, now we have start the study about the microphone, now we go for the loudspeaker design. How do you design the, the what is the loudspeaker and how do you what is design, how do you design the loudspeaker. Now, if you again the loudspeaker specification is also important that frequency response and then uh, then the uh, 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 then there is a resistance of the loudspeaker is very important. So, in loudspeaker what is the functional requirement? The requirement of the loudspeaker is that it should convert that electrical signal to acoustical signal. So, convert electrical signal from if you say the audio 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 range 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz frequency range to proportional acoustical acoustical pressure efficiently and with minimum distortion. So, if I say the purpose of the loudspeaker is that to convert electrical signal may be supply from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz to the proportional acoustical pressure with minimum distortion distortion should be very minimum. So, handle a dynamic pressure range of 80 dB that is that is means 10 to the power 5 is to 1 10 to the power 4 is to 1 diaphragm displacement ratio 80 dB okay, to direct acoustic energy to wide area uniformly that means what is the purpose of the loud suppose I in this room if I put two loudspeaker the purpose is that whatever the acoustic electrical signal is coming from amplifier, it should convert to the acoustic signal and direct in uniformly in the room. Okay. So, this is the functional requirement of a loudspeaker. Now, go for the theory. So, loudspeaker is nothing but a source of sound. So, it is can be can considered as sound source. Okay. So, definition of a simple source, what is simple source? Simple source is an imaginary sound source theory, not in practical, let us theory. A simple sound source is an imaginary sound source in shape of a sphere whose radius can be changed, so that the whole sphere expand and construct. How the sound will be produced in here? So, I can I can consider a imaginary sound source here, which is kind of spherical in nature. So, it is constant it is the change of the sphere whole sphere is changed construct construct and expand construct and expand and then it produces the sound in spherical wave the sound will be propagated in all direction. So, this is the definition of a source here in now if the sphere is changing in construction and expansion constriction and expansion. So, surround air will also have constriction and expansion and that way the sound energy will be distributed in the room. Okay. So, expression of the pressure of the sound source will be P is equal to J into rho 0 omega omega a square u divided by r, r is the distance from the source or e to the power J omega t minus minus k into where P is the acoustic pressure at a distance r from the source, P if the P is the acoustic pressure at a distance r from the spherical source, then it is nothing but a j rho 0 omega a square u, a is the diaphragm area of the, a is the radius of the source, a is the radius of the sound source is construct and expand. So, a is the radius of the source, omega is the angular frequency and u if you see I have written in term of omega is written term of twice pi f. So, I define f is the frequency, he uses the velocity surface velocity of the source, r is the distance from the source where p is being evaluated, c is the velocity of the sound and rho 0 is the density of the undist equilibrium density of the air. So, if I see in that equation both the magnitude and phase, so this is the phase, this create the phase and this create the magnitude both are complex and depends on frequency. In if I say the amplitude is rho 0 omega a square a, a square u by r that also depends on the omega the frequency and phase is also depends on the omega the frequency. Okay. So, for 
for the sphere frequency response is a linear function of frequency. That means, if I say the p is nothing but a proportional to omega, p is proportional to omega, omega is nothing but a twice pi f. So, if I double the frequency, the pressure also will be double. Okay. And p is inversely proportional to 1 by r, which is the spherical wave propagation, because that uh, the, uh, the, the, the inverse square law is support for this only. Now, this equation of the pressure tells us that the radiated pressure from one source of radius A. Now, if I say the, the surface velocity u, so if I say radius A, I have a one source with radius A and surface velocity u. So, paper pressure is proportional to a square into u. So, if I say one source have an radius a 1 and surface velocity u 1, another source has a radius a 2 and surface velocity u 2. Now, if a 1 square u 1 is equal to a 2 square u 2, then the both the source will create the same pressure, <coughs> sorry, both the source will be create the same pressure. So, for one source radius the surface velocity so u will then the same as another source with the radius a 2. So, so same with a different radius, if I create the radius of the diaphragm is different, someone is very small radius diaphragm and some la large radius diaphragm. If the, if the velocity of the sound is also changed, if the surface velocity of the diaphragm is changed, if it is S a 1 square u 1 is equal to a 2 square u then I can say both the loudspeaker is produce the same sound pressure. Now, the, the how, wha, wha, what amount of sound pressure will be produced that depends on the a 1, the radius of the diaphragm and a and u. So, now we call this is called volume velocity or source strength. So, if the other things is remain constant, then the source strength q is defined as the product of surface velocity, surface velocity into the surface area, surface velocity u into the surface area 4. So, u into 4 pi a square is called the strength of the source q. Strength of the source is nothing but a surface velocity multiply by the surface area. And what is the unit? Velocity and area. So, it is a meter cube per second, volume velocity meter cube per second. Okay. Now, definition of now come to the some definition will go for then then go for the microphone design. What is the definition of a monopole? Acoustics monopole, not the microwave monopole, acoustics monopole. If the radius of the source is low down to tends to 0, we have an idealized, but not realizable source called a monopole. So, if the I, I said that I want a surface sphere to produce the sound of radius r by changing the radius I create the sound. Okay. Now, if the radius is tends to 0 point source, then I can say it is nothing but a monopole. Theoretically, it is possible, but it is not realizable. You say the spherical wave propagation is fail, solution is fail when r equal to 0 or r equal to infinity, both the way. So, r, if r equal to sorry r equal to 0, the, the, the solution is fail. So, at r equal to if the r is equal to 0, then ideally it is not real, not realizable, but ideally it can possible, then it is defined as monopole. So, pressure radiated from the monopole can be written as p divided by strength of the microphone strength, uh, uh, strength source strength then it will be j rho 0 f by 2 r into a to the power this thing. Okay. If we change to f is change to c k, then it will be c k by 2 pi, 4 pi r square. So, it is nothing but a change. So, how it is again? The f is k is the wave number. So, it is 2 pi by lambda, 2 pi by f by c. So, f is c k by 2 pi. So, if it is f is changed by c k by 2 pi, this will be the pressure divided by surface strength. Now, if pressure change through a baffle. A hard perfectly reflecting plane surface placed very near 
an acoustics monopole is called buffle. So, suppose I have a sound source here. If I have a buffle, then the strength change, the strength of the monopole is change. So, in the presence of buffle, the pressure generated on that half space on the same side of the reflecting surface as a monopole is double. What is the meaning? Suppose I have a sphere, this is monopole. Let imaginary think that the radius of this monopole is 0. Then if I put a buffle here reflecting surface, then this side it will be spherical in nature, this side reflection will be directed to this side and the strength of the source will be double. Okay. So, if it is monopole strength is then it will be double too. This is 4 pi, 4 pi r. So, if I multiply by 2, it is 2 pi r, c k by 2 pi r. Okay. Now, a dipole, what is dipole? If the two monopole placed very close together with a source strength which are equal and opposite out of phase with each other is called the dipole. So, I, I require a two monopole placed in very close together with a source strength which are equal but in opposite phase. This source and this source are equal, but in opposite phase. Then I can create a dipole. So, pressure at any point due to a dipole depends on the frequency and distance. The pressure radiated in any direction depends also on the angle to the line joining the monopole. If the monopole are placed like this way, this pressure, this point pressure and this point pressure will be different, because the monopole, if the, the axis of the monopole if this, then the radiation pattern will be look like this. Okay. Then, so if you see the, the dipole radiation pattern, this is the figure of merit or figure of 8, sorry figure of 8 for the dipole. Okay. Now, I am not reading the slides. Now, I come for the, so you know the what is monopole and what is dipole, what is source strength. Now, loudspeaker design consideration. When we design a loudspeaker, diaphragm surface area, if I change the surface area of the diaphragm, then pressure is proportional to rho 0 into omega into s into u by r, r is the distance where I the measure the pressure. So, <coughs> I can say the pressure is proportional to the surface area and surface velocity and frequency omega is nothing but a 2 pi f. Okay. So, s is nothing but a 4 pi a square a is the radius of the radius of the diaphragm and f is the frequency of the diaphragm. Okay. So, the surface strength of the loudspeaker is nothing but a s into u. So, it is nothing but a surface velocity. So, u is nothing but a surface velocity, surface velocity here. If you see in here, u is nothing but a surface velocity. What is surface velocity u? Surface velocity is nothing but a displacement in angular moment. Angular velocity multiply by the surface displacement. Suppose a diaphragm is in here. So, what is surface velocity? Displacement of the diaphragm multiply by the angular velocity. So, it is nothing but a x into omega, okay. x into omega, where x is the surface displacement, x is the surface displacement. So, I can write p is proportional to rho 0 omega into s into x into omega. So, it is nothing but a rho 0 omega square s into x or I can say that pressure produced from the source is proportional to 
f square where omega is nothing but a 2 pi f. So, square of the frequency. So, p can increase, pressure can be increased. If you see the p, p is nothing but a rho 0 omega square s into x. So, the, the sound pressure or acoustic pressure produced by the microphone can be increased by increasing the s, s is increased or if I increase s surface area, what will happen? Surface area that means, if this is my diaphragm size, let this is my diaphragm size. So, surface area s is nothing but a 4 pi a square radius is a. Okay. If I change to this area, then diaphragm size is change. If the diaphragm size is change, the diaphragm mass will be change. So, increase in surface area resulting that increasing surface area resulting the increase in mass of the diaphragm. Okay. Now, if I say if the mass of the diaphragm is increased, then the required force to move the diaphragm f is nothing but a mass of the diaphragm into acceleration. Let us acceleration is written by omega square let us acceleration uh, mass into acceleration let us acceleration is written by uh, f let us not f is not frequency m f force is equal to mass into acceleration. Okay. So, what is acceleration? Acceleration is nothing but a omega square x. If x is the displacement then u is nothing but a omega x and uh, u and a is nothing but a omega square x. So, if it is that then I can write force is equal to mass into omega square into x where omega square x is the acceleration of the diaphragm. Now, f is proportional to omega square. The force required force to move the diaphragm is proportional to omega square. So, see if I if I want to produce a larger pressure acoustic pressure I have to increase the area of the diaphragm. If I increase the diaphragm area, the mass of the diaphragm is increases and to move that mass I required more force. So, the electrical energy which will be converted to the mechanical energy should be high enough or produce that force which can move the diaphragm. Okay. Now, the force is proportional to omega square. So, if I change the frequency, so if I say I want to produce a 20 hertz or let us 30 hertz acoustic signal, then it, I can take a large diaphragm, okay, force is reasonable. But suppose I want to produce a 5 kilohertz signal within a that same speaker, then the force will be huge. So, my amplifier may not be able to deliver that force on that frequency to the diaphragm to move, then diaphragm cannot produce that frequency. So, what is the solution? If you see, if I there is a bottleneck in here, if I want to produce a large acoustical energy, then I require the diaphragm area must be very high. Now, if I change the diaphragm area is high, then the mass of the diaphragm is increases and I require a more mechanical force to move the diaphragm, which will come from the electrical energy. Okay. So, large if you see in practical there is a large box, which can produce a large acoustic power by using the large area diaphragm area is very large. If the diaphragm area is very large, it can produce a large acoustic power is ok, but if the high frequency is has to be produced then I required a more electrical power to move the diaphragm that may not be possible. So, large large acoustical energy when I want then if I want a large diaphragm may be the high frequency component or frequency response of the loudspeaker may be drop or high frequency component may be cut out. So, what is the solution? Solution is that use multiple unit of small diaphragm. 
So, I, I want to increase the acoustic power. So, I can put several microphone together is one solution. Another solution is that I can split the audio signal whatever the I want to feed and I can produce the high frequency audio signal by a smaller area of the diaphragm and the low frequency mid frequency diaphragm moderately larger area and the low frequency moderately high area of the diaphragm. So, the low is called woofer, medium is called mid range and high frequency loudspeaker is called tweeter. In practical case, if you see any loudspeaker, large loudspeaker system or large box, if you see there is a two loudspeaker is mounted, one is huge and another is very small, generally two are there. This is called tweeter and this is called woofer. So, woofer produce the low frequency sound and tweeter produce the high frequency sound. Now, you can say the low frequency sound will be high energy and the high frequency side will be low energy, yes. As per human listening system, we are much, if low frequency we to perceive the low frequency sound, we require much high amplitude. To perceive the high frequency sound, we require very low amplitude. So, our ear response is like that and also the frequency perception in human being is not linear, it is a non-linear scale. Lower side frequency we perceive very good, but when it goes to the upper side, we may not perceive that good frequency difference. So, what I do? Since that my construction does not allow me to produce high frequency at larger power, so I put a two loudspeaker in same system, one is produce low frequency and another is produce high frequency. So, the acoustical signal has the both the signal, but lower one is boosted up and upper one is by produced by the tweeter. So, that is why the tweeter is important. If you cut down the tweeter, then high frequency response of the loudspeaker will be drastically changed. So, if you say that okay, I want to use for a voice purpose, maybe Twitter is not that much of required, but if you want to listen a classical music on a loudspeaker, you may require a Twitter. And also that if you want to listen the classical music in a huge loudspeaker, it is not that much of very good, if you want to listen in a very good small loudspeaker. Okay. So, this is the reason why the tweeter is there in a loudspeaker system. So, each so and, and also I can produce the large sound by, uh, by using a baffles. So, in generally if you see in uh, in practical scenario that if you see the horn, have you seen the horn? There is a horn mic and I put the here the loudspeaker is in here and it is connected to a horn. Why it is produced? Because the sound energy is produced in here, it provides some directivity of the sound energy in single direction. That is why the sound energy nothing but a mechanically amplified. So, that is called baffles. Baffles can increase the sound pressure reasonably high. So, if I put a loudspeaker, if you see the loudspeaker as casing, there is a box, black box is there and then we house the loudspeaker in there. So, that black box is called baffle which increase the sound energy in that direction. Okay. Now, I am not going, this is the uh, principle of moving uh, moving coil loudspeaker construction it is the same as microphone construction because it is a anti reciprocal uh, transducer, it can act as a loudspeaker as well as it can act as a microphone also, but in loudspeaker we make a very huge cone for the low frequency loudspeaker and for small low high frequency loudspeaker, the cone size will be very small. Then this is the arrangement, you can read it, I will share the slide, you can read it from there. So, now there is a equation, frequency response of the loudspeaker. So, force produced by the loudspeaker A, mechanical force is nothing but a B into L into I. Magnetic flux, that B is the strength of the magnetic field, L is the length of the wire, I is the current passed through the wire. 
flux density, air gap, force acting on the voice coil, effective coil length and current A. Okay. This is the if so that means if I have designed a moving coil loudspeaker and if I apply a or maximum loudspeaker or moving coil loudspeaker, if I apply a electrical current I and the length of the coil is L, then the, the force acting on the diaphragm F will be B L into I. Okay. Now, what is the velocity of the cone or what is the velocity of the diaphragm motion V or let us velocity write C, C is the sound velocity. So, write V, velocity will be nothing but A force by or u velocity or let us write u is nothing but a force by impedance, force by impedance meter per second. Okay. Now, what is impedance? Is it a mechanical impedance? Force by mechanical impedance? Now, if you remember the mechanical resonance, then I said the z is minimum this when the velocity will be maximum, when z is minimum, the z is minimum when if z is nothing but a r m plus j x m when the reactive component is vanished is equal to 0. So, only resistive then z will be minimum. So, if z m is equal to r m plus j omega m minus s by omega, then at which frequency the z will be z m will be minimum when omega m minus s by omega is equal to 0, omega m minus s by omega equal to 0. So, if x m is 0, z m is minimum, then I can get the lower frequency frequency response of the loudspeaker will be like this, this is the power, the power the, this is the f 0 and this is the f 1. So, power daily power produced by the loudspeaker will be flat during the f 0 to f 1. How to determine f 0? <coughs> f 0 is the frequency at which z is minimum that means, entirely resistive no reactive and f 1 is the frequency higher frequency this f 1 is the frequency where at which the lambda and diaphragm diameter are roughly equal. The f 1 is the that lambda f 1 what is the lambda for f 1? The lambda is nothing but a c by f. So, c by f 1 is the highest lambda when the this lambda is equal to the diaphragm area a area of the diaphragm then I call that is f 1. So, f 1 is nothing but a c by a sorry diameter diaphragm diameter are equal. So, diaphragm diameter. So, it diameter means not radius 2 a c by 2 a. So, if if I have a 343 meter per second is my sound velocity and if the diaphragm area is the uh, if diaphragm area let us uh, radius is let us uh, I can say 6 centimeter not 6 centimeter 6 inch or let us say I said uh, 100 centimeter di diaphragm 100 centimeter radius diaphragm. So, it is 3 by 200 centimeter. So, it will be 10 to the power minus 2. So, it is nothing but a 343 divided by 200 into 10 to the power minus 2. Okay. So, high the area the radius high, high, high di diameter loudspeaker cannot produce the flat frequency flat uh, cannot deliver the flat power at the high frequency that is why I require the tweeter and it will be decayed by 12 dB per octave on both sides. Every doubling the frequency it will decayed by 12 dB. So, at twice f 1 if f 1 is equal to 1 twice f 1 it will be half power. Okay. Then 
the voice coil. How what should be the voice coil? With increase the power dissipation, temperature will be raised. Then temperature can go up to 150 degree centigrade. So, how do you reduce that things? Loss by coil gap, the coil gap relationship. So, I can construct that my uh, uh, loudspeaker like this. The coil is this is the magnetic gap, and I can coil can be designed like this way. So, there will be a loss. I, this is the magnetic field, coil can be designed for this portion only, or I can design the coil equal to this magnetic area. So, this all three has an advantage and disadvantage. So, if it is there, so uh, uh, so the long short mass coil, so coil is always in the magnetic flux path. So, the low distortion on high amplitude signal A and B, the coil is always in magnetic path and C, A is inefficient as a larger power loss in higher coil length and if we see B is inefficient as magnetic field not fully used and efficient, but limit so to reduce distortion. So, this is the three A, B, three picture. So, this you can read and that way. Then diaphragm, then multiple multiple drive, drive systems. So, how do you what I said that if I increase the area of the diaphragm, then that it cannot produce the high frequency. So, for the high frequency, I can divide the input signal in two path, two area. One is the low frequency and another is the high frequency, then I can drive the two amp, two loudspeaker. So, signal has to be split, tweeter is the high frequency and that uh, other one is the low frequency. Now, while gradually I, this is the, uh, the, the, the I does not required, you can go through the slides. Then I show you something on reference axis. So, loudspeaker housing is not that easy. So, if it is this tweeter and main loudspeaker in this the same plane, then the reference axis is this one. If it is housing like this, then the reference axis is this one. So, radiation power will be in this direction okay. and this reference axis is this if I put like this. So, to cope this is the and if I this way the reference axis is this. So, different construction give you the different reference axis. And there is another thing is the baffle, design of the baffle. So, coplanar, coaxial, co the, the baffles design, baffles and enclosure also very important for loudspeaker. So, you can show, you can read these slides because there is a lot of uh, <laughs> less of time. So, I cannot go details on the baffles and enclosure. Roughly, it is nothing but a 3.5 meters and it can be reduced by constructing the black box and then I housing the loudspeaker. Okay. So, this is the more or less loudspeaker design. Main part is that how do you how do we decide the area of the diaphragm and you have to design you have to find out the F 0 and F 1 okay. and then the mathematical calculation will come from the reciprocal and anti reciprocal transduction design. Okay. Okay. Thank you.